Well, the foundation of the song and the beginning of the song really came from Isaiah. Being one of the worst, I, I remember I used to say, hey, Isaiah, any idea? And Isaiah quickly kind of didn't even think about it, just gave us this groove. I started to play around some notes here and there. You know, suddenly this bass line I had in my head for quite some time pop up. Just an awesome bass line melody and that was sort of in this swung one drop feel. A lot of reggae has a straight eighth note feel and that has a certain awesome kind of stiffness and forward motion. Stiffness not in a bad way, but it's got this certain tightened up feel, right? With the swing eighth, it's got this totally laid back, swingy, swingy thing, you know, like you could play a jazz ride cymbal um, and a walking bass line, you know, underneath a really great swing feel in reggae. I don't know if it's conscious or subconscious, but Zach, the drummer, really, um, you know, gave us like a horse mouth flavor with the hi-hat and the kind of drum pattern that's being used there. When recording the drums for One Rock, I really wanted to be intentional in the way that I interacted with the rest of the elements going on throughout the song. I didn't want to just play a straight one drop, um, so I kind of tried to be really playful with accenting different parts of the song or parts of the bass line, just to give it a lot of flair and a lot of playfulness. For me, when I hear that kind of a groove, I just have to go to the organ and play the bubble. I really wanted it to be more based on the organ as the, the foundation keyboard instrument and less on piano, you know? Less on the piano chop, even though the piano chop is, is on the recording. And, you know, I was thinking uh, more Wire Lindo, you know, who was Bob Marley's keyboard player, and he wouldn't just play a simple bubble and chop. Especially with his right hand, he would mess around a lot, you know. Harrison started uh, developing the melody and the lyrical content, and that added to one E's original idea there with the chords and the bass line gave birth to the song One Rock. That's the song that Dr. Dredd and Roger Steffens came in and Roger's wife, of course, Mary. Um, I remember we were in the middle of a take and just rocking out and those guys went up in the, into the control booth and I was really looking forward to seeing them and they kind of had a schedule and had to take off and it was too bad because I saw them for a very short amount of time. Dr. Dredd is the founder of Ross Records, which is like the largest United States record label for reggae music in the history of the music. And Roger Steffens is a historian and an author, toured with Bob Marley, and is, these guys have been a part of this music for decades and decades and decades. It was just a great vibe to see them and, you know, like I said, this was still... Uh, people were still kind of social distancing when we were doing this record. Uh, it was getting a little, bo a, a little bit softer, but it was still happening. So it was nice to just see people in the studio and see their reaction to our music. Me personally, I didn't know who they were uh, initially, so it sort of, you know, took me out of the flow for a moment of, of recording because I was, you know, eager to, to get the take and to to nail the song. Once they settled in and kind of got into the control room, I think it gave us a little extra boost to perform even better and to really give it our all and to, you know, put out a little show for them and, and to share what we've been working on. It was a, a really great moment to uh, have a little private audience in studio. And I think it comes out in the recording. Part of the Congo's record is a reggae standard, you know? It's something that all reggae musicians and everybody must know that album, The Heart of the Congos. 
if you're really going to feel reggae, feel the spiritual side of reggae and Rastafari music. I think the Congos bring such a rich, deep, authentic root sound to this song. Well, the Congos, they, believe it or not, they pass me this, uh, this usefulness, you know? They are just so free. Um, I had the chance to play for them once, uh, years ago, and I remember feeling that energy, that they are just so free, and they know exactly what to do as a vocal trio. And it's just amazing, I mean, to, to be able to still be able to uh, uh, have them, you know? To be able to have them on this track is really nice. Just the value that they represent in reggae and what they have to say uh, with their voices and, and their expression. In the studio, it was pure bliss, a joy, you know? It came in, of course, I've known Cedric and Ashanti Roy and Wati now for years and years and years. I met Cedric when I was a teenager, and um, working, of course, from Hebron Gate, here I am with Groundation in the Congos is like more than 20 years. It's amazing to be on a recording uh, with these venerated masters of Jamaican music. And these guys, of course, came from the roots, from, you know, its inception back in the late 60s. Cedric Mighton has this really magical vibe and Ashanti Roy too, the energy and Wati, the three of them, you know, all three original. There's not many of these groups left and to have all three of them in good health and good spirit uh, was amazing. Of course, the album One Rock would become the title track and it was also the song that first captured Giovanni Mackey's uh, mind and, and in images and in visual ways to creating the album cover. And um, it was that first line that Giovanni really caught on. Between love and it, between peace and war, we're in a tug of war of what's to come. And I was like, wow, you know, them lyrics really, you know, positive and, you know, have a little militancy. Between love and it, between peace and war, we're in a tug of war for what's to come. And all the energy surrounding the earth, it seems to yawn dead composed, meaning there's no repeating sections, you know, lyrically it just goes, but it's bookended, you know, the front and the back by this chant by the Congos. There is a particular lyric in Cedric's part that I really like. You star dreamer, you have no vision for the future, you know, you're a distant joker. So I kind of, my interpretation of the lyrics was basically, I wonder if he's talking about uh, these, these um, top, top millionaires, they're exploring space now and saying that Earth is, is done with, right? And we love, we, we know we love our planet, so we could never be okay with that. You starship dreamer, you are a distant joker. The song One Rock is really about mankind's thirst to, to push the earth to its limits, to try and squeeze whatever you can out of the earth, you know? Like that line of um, experience has written those lines in his face, all surrounded by a lion's mane, and hungry and thirsty through the desert he'll crawl to the Dead Sea shores, but he can't drink. So to the man's last breath of life just needs to get a little sip of water and the earth refuses it to him. Groundation is famous for taking the music in experimental kind of directions and there's a little mini example of that in this song. Um, there's a 5-4 bar that gets snuck in at the end of each form. We added a beat to kind of extend, you know, the tension of that part and to give you know, after that extra beat, bah, boom, kind of every time it comes around, it kind of gives it this lift and this little moment of excitement. I don't know, something about those hits, it's just every time it came back to the groove, it felt so good. But he can't be. Well, 
I would have to say the favorite part is my guitar solo, okay? <laughs> no, just kidding. I love Eduardo's guitar solo. I think it's just so fitting for the song and the message of the song and the vibe of the music and the feel. He does a fantastic job. And I love the footage of him up on the rock. I'm looking at it right here. I just really love the song. I love the bridge. I like the chords that are being used in the bridge. They create this tension. And I love the intro of the song for the same thing. It's a tension. There's a tension there. I like these things, you know, it's almost like you're watching a, a 007 movie. I like that kind of stuff. One of my favorite on the album, Every Rockers, you know? High energy, powerful messages. Yeah, man. Life changes all the time. Manifesting prophecies through the line. And it's true what the Rastaman said. 